In today's video, we'll check out the MageDock PI-X10 15.6 inch 4K UHD OLED portable touchscreen display. And I would like to thank MageDock for sending it over for review. This monitor is great for adding a second display while traveling and will easily fit in your laptop bag. It's ready for use whenever you need a 4K display with touchscreen functionality. In this video, we'll check out what's included, try it out on two different PCs, as well as a Raspberry Pi 5, and see how it looks. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Let's take a quick look at the features of the MageDock PIX10. It is a 15.6 inch 4K UHD OLED panel with a maximum resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels. It's operating at 60 frames per second or FPS. It is a 10 point touchscreen with one millisecond reaction time. Typically it will include a stylus pen, but this one did not. The display is a matte finish for reduced glare and includes an integrated stand with a 75 by 75 millimeter visa mount. The MageDock portable monitor arrives in a nifty package in a very sturdy box. The monitor itself is shipped inside this blue protective pouch. We'll take a look at it shortly. Inside the box, we have a 13 page manual. It's organized pretty good and does go over a number of setup scenarios. One thing to point out is you don't want to connect a USB-C power supply beyond 30 watts or the manual warns it might cause a short. Something to be cautious of. It does come with a number of cables that you may need, such as an HDMI to HDMI cable, a USB-C to USB-C. There are four visa mount screws if you're looking to mount it to a stand. It is a 75 by 75 millimeter visa mount. There is also a USB-A to USB-C cable. This white USB-C to USB-C cable is for the power supply, outputting 5 volts and 4.5 and amps. It carries a one-year warranty and a card indicating not to leave it on a static image for a long time or it may cause burn-in. The manual indicates that if that happens, just leave it off for a few hours and it should resolve any issues. The display itself weighs about 1.87 pounds, has a strong metal stand on the back that folds and is built into the display. The pouch has a separator for storing your cables on one side and the display on the other. The integrated metal stand is very sturdy and holds the display up very well. On the left hand side, you have buttons for power on or off, a function increase button for things such as the volume or brightness, a function decrease, exit, and a menu button. You can also use the touch screen on the display to adjust many of the settings. On the right side, you have ports for a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, USB-C for the display and touch screen, a standard HDMI port, USB-C port for power only, and a mini display port. For USB-C to the display, your computer will need to support USB 3.1. Here I've connected it to my primary laptop, which does support USB 3.1 and had a total of three displays. Adding the Mage Dock as the fourth was no problem. 4K YouTube video playback on the display looked stunning. I simply connected the power to the top USB-C port and the connection to the laptop USB-C port on the lower port. Playback at 4K 60fps with HDR enabled looked beautiful. The colors were vibrant and the dark colors didn't look washed out. Here's a good example of how well the dark images looked on the OLED panel. At this point, I'm manually bringing in the camera closer to the image so you can see things close up. I also connected just the USB-C cable without the power, and this also worked, but doing so will depend on the capabilities of your computer. Otherwise, a 4K HDMI cable may be necessary. You can enter the on-screen menu by pressing the OSD menu button on the left-hand side. From there, you can use the touchscreen to make any adjustments. Your options will be limited while in HDR mode, as I have it set here. With HDR off, there are a number of options that can be adjusted for the mode, color, 
picture, signal, and the cool thing is all of them can be controlled using the touchscreen which makes the adjustments much easier than using the side buttons. At the back of the display the integrated stand can fold completely flush. The four holes are provided to mount the display to a visa mount and there are two small speakers. The sound levels are okay but not particularly loud. The display angle can be adjusted however you want. There are no preset orientations. The display panel itself is very thin but due to the metal construction, it has a nice weight to it and feels premium at only around 8 millimeters thick. It should come with a stylus pen, as mentioned earlier. Since this model did not, I used a cheap one I had on hand. I can't comment on how well the pen works, but the touchscreen did work while doodling with this one. I also tested the display with the Raspberry Pi 5 and encountered an issue that we'll discuss. But first, here's how everything was connected. USB-C power to the Pi 5 and USB-C power to the monitor using the included adapter, micro HDMI to standard HDMI to the display, and USB-A to USB-C to the display for the touchscreen functionality. This worked fine. I had the Pi 5 set for HD at this point, loaded up the calculator app, and everything was fine. Browsing at 1080p, also no problem. The Pi 5 kept up pretty well. Now with the display in Pi OS set for 4K, of course everything is smaller and more difficult to read, but things still look good. YouTube video playback at full screen looked fine. While the video itself is 4K, the Pi 5 would only output HD within Pi OS. This has nothing to do with the display, but even with several drop frames, the display itself looked very nice and the colors were very sharp. Where things got a little wonky is when I unplugged the power to the display with the USB-C touchscreen cable plugged in, the startup image would just loop. It kept repeating and repeating and never showed the image. However, if I unplugged the touchscreen USB-C cable and left it off for a few seconds, then plugged it back in, everything went back to normal. This seems to be an issue with the display being able to properly recover. When I plugged in the power, it should have shown the image from the Pi 5 and allowed the touchscreen to function without having to unplug the touchscreen USB-C and plug it back in. I guess if you know the sequence, it may be fine, but something I personally found puzzling. This is the first 4K touchscreen display I've ever used, so it could be my lack of experience with them. I've now switched over to my gaming PC. If you want to hear more about it, I'll place a link up above. Yars Recharged is available on Steam and is a game I enjoy. It's a remake of the classic Atari 2600 game, Yars Revenge. If this isn't your first visit to the channel, you already know that Virtual Pinball is something I enjoy talking about. Knight Rider Pinball on Pinball FX looks great on this display with HDR turned on. The blacks don't look washed out and the same is true with Pacific Rim. Both of these tables were released within a month of each other and are a lot of fun to play, if you enjoy pinball. Every game I tried on this display looked much better than my prior HD display that I've been using for several years. The colors look crisp on the OLED panel and for the price of the display, they should. This model retails for nearly $700 but can be found on Amazon for around $570 US dollars. Still, a hefty price tag, in my opinion. It is unfortunate that the unit didn't include the MPP stylus pen. It would have been interesting to see how the pressure-sensitive pen would work on various paint applications. The one issue I did have with the Pi 5 is also something to consider. I hope that the information that you found in this video will help you determine if the PI-X10 4K UHD OLED display makes sense for your needs. I do plan on using it in future videos, so this is surely not the last time you'll see it on this channel. Speaking of which, if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. It's a lot of fun checking out new technologies, and don't forget to check out the guide section on my website, wagnerstechtalk.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.